Good morning, everyone. I see there's over 30 people already in the room uh, watching. Um, we're a little bit early. We're going to start in a minute. But if you would take a minute and look in the upper right of your screen, there is a little uh, question mark that you can open the questions window. And um, as you open that questions window throughout the presentation, if you want to make a comment or you do have a question, please just type it in. And we also ask that at the bottom of this questions uh, uh, window, there is a place that you can type your name. It currently says you or anonymous, and maybe you change it to your name. So if you just be patient, we'll start in a minute. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I would like to uh, uh, start this um, meeting, this virtual demo. And before we do, I would like to remind you that you have the ability to ask questions and we encourage that if you have a question to ask it. And that would be, there's a question mark icon in the upper right uh, window of your screen. If you open that, you get a little side window of the ability to ask questions. And we would also ask that on that same window at the bottom, there is a section that says anonymous or you, and you can actually change that to have your name there. And then when you ask a question, uh, we can keep track of these questions uh, the best. So with that, uh, I'm going to uh, just simply introduce Mr. Tim Duffy. Um, I'm going to put him on the screen here. And Tim's going to introduce himself and this presentation. Go ahead, Tim. Good morning, everyone. Uh, like Brian said, my name is Tim Duffy. I'm from the Eastern Regional Office of MCC. Um, welcome to the BNA 42S2 and the BNA 42DHY3 presentation. 
As Brian mentioned, our technical sales team are here to answer your questions during the event. And we do invite you to type in your questions at any time. Thank you. The Miano BNA 42S2 is the second generation of the BNA 42S model. The benefits of this model are that it is built on a space saving design. In addition, it is capable of complex machining on both the main spindle and the secondary sub spindle. As you can see, the machine has a very small footprint. Uh, it weighs approximately 6,200 pounds. The bed has been constructed like a platform to maintain flat surfaces and reduce deformation and distortion and to minimize the effects of heat. The tool spindle is smooth and uniform surface. So even in the event of thermal expansion, the display displacement is all in the same direction which means that the relative dislocation between the workpiece and the cutting tool can be controlled. The main spindle is mounted on the left side of the one piece constructed cast base. The spindle has full C axis capability. However, it is not shown in this picture. The sub spindle also has a C axis as a standard function. The spindle slide, known as the V axis, is a box wear design and is known for its high rigidity. The octagon turret is mounted on a carriage that has a Z axis of a box wear design. The X axis on the turret is a dovetail mount. All slide wears on this model have been hand scraped. The high rigidity spindle is a key component and it adopts angular contact ball bearings at the front and double row cylindrical bearings at the rear. See the bearings at, it bearings at the front, the spindle nose, and at the rear, we have double row cylindrical roller bearings. Rotating accuracy is assured by the angular contact ball bearing while the radial loads are supported by the double row cylindrical roller bearing. Some of the machine specifications. Um, the maximum machine and diameter for bar work is uh, inch and five eighths, or 42 millimeter. The maximum machine and length is approximately 3.9 inches. The main spindle speed has a 6,000 RPM maximum. The sub spindle has a 5,000 RPM max with a 5 eighths capacity. The live tool spindle speed has a 5,000 RPM max. Uh, rapid traverse rates on all axis are 20 meters a minute. The maximum power rating for the main spindle is 10 horsepower. The sub spindle is rated at 7.3 horse and the live tool power at 3.7 horse. These are all per 15 minute rating. The main spindle chucking has a DIN 173E system as standard. The unit accepts B42 and TF48 style collets. The main spindle draw tube ID is 43 millimeter and the spindle nose is a 110 millimeter flat nose. The machine comes with four or filler tubes of various sizes for the main spindle. The length of the main spindle is approximately 33 inches from the collet face to the rear of the spindle. So this is important if you plan on running maybe four foot bars or something and uh, you haven't got a bar feed there or you've got a 
short ball order. We need to be careful. Um, there is companies out there that can actually put an extension. I believe it's another 10 inches possibly on the rear of the main spindle if you're going to use a short loader and uh, use maybe four foot lengths of bar instead of three foot lengths. Uh, the sub spindle accepts the same collets as the main. However, the draw tube diameter is 30 millimeters. The spindle nose is of a special design on the sub spindle side. Uh, no chuck mount is available. As you can see, the sub spindle has an inner sleeve uh, that accepts a collet system. However, the main housing is the spindle itself. Uh, no spindle nose is actually bolted, bolted under the unit. The cabinet for the collet is bolted onto the actual spindle. So here we're seeing the cabinet on the front end, and we're seeing the inner sleeve there. And I must say in the actual spindle itself, which if we follow it all back, as I say, it's an integral part. The, the front end is an integral part of the spindle itself. The bolts you're seeing here are actually only all they're doing is bolting on a, a cover for the sub spindle. So like I mentioned, it's a, a special design and it's it's not really flexible like a lot of lids where this would be bolted on this front end section. You could pull that off and put a different type collet system or chuck system on there. And just to confirm, Tim, this is the 42S. That is correct. The DHY3 will be coming up later. So here's a better view of the sub spindle nose. As mentioned, the collet cap nut bolts directly onto the spindle. Here's a list of optional chucking systems that are available for the BNA 42S machine. Uh, for the main spindle, we have an S S20 collet part system, uh, brown and sharp 22D, uh, five inch three jaw chuck, uh, five inch two jaw chuck. Uh, the only option we have in the quotation uh, for the sub spindle is a brown and sharp number 22 system. Like I said, now that is an option. As mentioned, it, uh, the standard setup is a B42 or TF48 system. The long workpiece unit is available as an option. Uh, however, the max capacity is 23 millimeter diameter parts. The low style chip conveyor is also needed if you're using this device. The frame shows the long shaft work device and various sizes of liner tubes. Here's the liner tubes. There's the stand, little receiver box. The standard unit, the long workpiece device, can handle parts of up to 325 millimeters in length. On this slide, you can see that the long shaft work device or the long workpiece device, uh, as mentioned, mounts over the low style chip conveyor. So there's the low style conveyor. This slides and covers this top end. Parts get pushed out the sub spindle and onto the receiver tray. The parts catcher uh, is standard on the machine. Um, obviously, it's a small basket and this can handle uh, parts up to 100 millimeters in length. The restriction is the actual size of the basket and the re receiver box area. So here we have the basket. It's on an arm and this is the receiver box. So you, know, you might say, well, we'll just hack a little piece out of there and we can spit longer parts out. You need to be careful because as I say this receiver box has got its restrictions also. Uh, the parts conveyor comes standard with the machine. The machine comes with a hinge type chip conveyor. Uh, 250 micron filler type will be available soon. Uh, it's not listed in the quotation at this time. 
I need to follow up and actually see what the status is on that um, 250 micron filter type. The turret is an eight station design that can accommodate various fixed and live tools. Uh, in addition, the turret has half index and capability, and that greatly enhances the amount of tools that can be used on both the main and the sub spindle side. Uh, a point to note is the coolant through tooling. Um, so we have coolant through on the turret. Uh, can only be utilized on each of the eight stations. Uh, it's got a pressure of around 135 psi. Uh, however, it's not possible to use this on half index positions. The standard tooling package that comes with the machine includes turning holders, cut off holder, drilling holders, and some standard size drill bushings. The image on the left showing the turret with multi-position tool holders. Here's a triple, another triple. Uh, there's another knee holder, they call it this one. So eight stations doesn't seem a lot, but as I say with multiple pockets on each station and half index and uh, we can put a lot of tools in this machine. Um, the image here on the right it's showing the turret live tool drive mechanism. The tools are driven via tang drive. So this gear drives this one and this is tang driven so on the uh, in this area here is where you would bolt the turret, uh, bolt the tools under the turret face, tang drive. Here we see the tooling area on the BNA 42S2 machine. Uh, this small work envelope helps in reducing cycle times. So it's small footprint. Uh, it's got a fairly small uh, work area. I say that can be a hindrance at times, obviously, if you want to run real long, uh, long shafts or whatever, but it uh, makes up for speed if we have a small work area. Uh, the standard tooling which comes with a variety of OD and ID tooling, um, both the triple plane head and the knee holder utilize the half indexing feature on the machine. So here's a triple plane head, and here's a knee holder. So all the tools you're seeing here come standard. It's standard tool and package with the machine. Uh, double, triple, and quad holders uh, assure that sufficient tool positions given for complex work pieces. Uh, here we see the knee holder mounted on the double turning holder. So we have uh, say a double turning with the knee holder. Here's a live tool, double live and a, and a triple uh, ID. So we can have tools on the front, tools on the back. Here's a triple plane head working on the sub spindle side. Uh, if drilling beyond the cap nut, uh, we've got to be careful as adjacent tools uh, might interfere with the handle. So basically, if this was a deep drill, in other words, beyond the face of the cap nut, tools on either side of this one in this triple head could interfere with the cap nut. So we've got to be careful. Here we're seeing a typical uh, cross drilling unit that uses ER16 collets. Um, this has shown uh, external coolant. As I say, we do have coolant through the turret, so the coolant would get piped out of here. And there is tool holders that will go through the tool. A uh, third party vendor would supply those. Here we're seeing a, a, a Z live spindle unit. This unit would 
they're used specifically uh, for live tool work on the front side. So here's a Z offset holder that allows for greater drilling depth when working on the sub spindle side. When we're looking at some of these holders, you need to pay attention to different sizes. You can see this one from the center line to the back end is 84 millimeters, but as I say it's offset specifically to be used on the back to give you more uh, drilling depth. Well, you can use longer tools. So here's a view of the tooling area again. Um, we see that we have a total of 71.5 millimeters from the turret center line that's recommended that we use. So like I said, that last holder that we looked at had an 84 hanging out the back. So if we're trying to use this on the front side, remember this is somewhat specific for the back work. If we try to use it on the front, we need to be aware of this, that 84 millimeters. So based on the standard layout on the machine, we're gonna have problems using that holder. The earlier versions of DNA style machines, um, they had even less to work with on the back side. Uh, the recent models on the BNA platform have increased this clearance between the wall where the turret is basically attached and the turret itself. So we can get greater drilling depths these days than we used to be able to. And here shown that uh, double live Z unit. Um, this one in particular uses ER11 style collets. I say these aren't the only live tool units available. There's many and from different vendors, different styles. Uh, the CNC control is a Phonic Zero ITD. It has many NC function and functions included as standard. In addition to the functions on the right, supported software has been added to reduce cycle time and setup time. Machine and support screens, such as the machine and data screen, tool set screen, and tool counter screen make setups easier and quicker. The machine and data screen is used to set up work coordinates for each spindle. The items within this screen include the distance between the main and sub spindles. This can be used to shorten the work envelope, therefore reducing wasted motion traveling back and forth between primary and secondary operations. That would be operations on the main spindle, operations on the sub spindle. If we can shrink the work envelope even more, then we're gonna save on cycle time. The workpiece length and the chuck two position within this machine and data, automatically calculate where the sub spin leads to position for part transfer. Uh, tool geometry and tool wear can be automatically output or input within the program for this same machine and data screen, from this same machine and data screen. The origin of the part can be set to be at the front face, known as the top position or the cutoff position. Um, obviously, it's common to have the front end of your workpiece as the origin. There's only one customer I worked with uh, over the years, and he actually always programmed the origin of his part at the back, um, which I was horrified. I said, if you're gonna do that, then you need to program because I'm gonna crush your machine in a heartbeat if I use the back of the part as the origin. But anyway, we can select the origin via the machine and data screen. As mentioned earlier, the B axis can be shifted to work closer to the main site to reduce non cutting time. In addition, uh, the B axis can be independently controlled through a maximum of, maximum of 10 blocks of commands. You can see the G591 at the, to at the top of the sample program. 
The code for the back work or the B-axis machining is written after this code. The section of program ends with a G590. The information is stored in the control. Uh, the machine then reads the M291. When it reads the M291, it executes the data while completing all sub sub subsequent commands. In other words, it reads the 291 and discontinues, but at the same time, it actually executes the work that was written further up after the G591. It's got its limitations, uh, but I've used it to do a simple front and back spot drill. Yeah, I can recall the Syncom B series machines operating in a similar fashion. The following uh, machine and support screens help with the machine setup and uh, basically the overall efficiency of the machine. So we have a tool counter. The tool counter informs you the timing for tool changes according to the preset value. Uh, where offsets can also be input from this screen. So we would put a preset value in for the particular tool. Tool one in this case is set for 800 cycles or uses, let's say. And then it counts up when it reaches the count, you're going to get the machine alarm out and say I've reached the count. It's time to change the insert. The cycle time screen shows cutting and non-cutting time in each cycle. The start condition screen, uh, this displays the information to the operator on conditions for automatic running of the part program. The image show that the door is not closed, therefore we were unable to run in automatic operation. So we've got uh, basically green lights on ready origin. Uh, we've got no alarms, start switch, the mode's on the right thing for running an automatic. Uh, we haven't got a, a green light on the door, so you could look at this screen or the operator code and he's going to say, ah, that's why it's not going to run because the door's not closed. So as I say, all these machines are beneficial to the setup guy or and or the operator. Uh, so we Tim, have the, the spindle. Before, and before you continue, can I? There were some questions that I I missed, so I'm a couple slides off of some questions. Certainly. Uh, but if you could try one, here's uh, this is back to the uh, two drills at the same time. Can the machine superimposition drill and turn at the same time with the main and sub spindles? Uh, no, it cannot. Uh, remember this this BNA 42S. Um, does not have an X2 axis on the subspindle side. And as you know, we continue so a little bit later, the DHY, we, we will be able to, but this specific model can't. That's correct. That's and here's, correct. A, here's a second one. Can it do simultaneous C work on a shaft? Basically, uh, we can synchronize the C. So yes, in other words, can we support with the sub subspindle while coming in with a live tool and maybe machining a helical slot apart? Uh, yes, we can. Okay, so that's our, our two questions. So I'm sorry I, I interrupted you there. Please continue. No problem. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so uh, the spindle and revolving tool, new tool unit screen uh, allow setting of the speed range and manual operation. Uh, no need to go to MDI. You know, when the guy's setting up, sometimes he's going in between jog and MDI and he's programming a spindle speed. These basically uh, extra screens, let's say, custom screens within the control make it a lot easier for setting up. And in this case, just even starting up a spindle, maybe to touch off or something at any point. Uh, here's another screen. Uh, the cutting pattern can be displayed here. Uh, this shows the current machining mode. Uh, 
The image shows that we are currently turning on spindle two or the sub spindle. Uh, the controller has determined this as a G520 has been read from the running program. So it's you may look at this screen when it's running, you know, you might have coolant on the window or whatever the case may be. But if you looked at this screen, it would tell us that the turret is actually being used on the sub spindle. And it knows this, it knows how to display that because it reads these what we call special G codes within the program. We read a G520 in this case, which means that it's doing some turning on the sub spindle. Turning, i.e. non-live tool work. So the running program on the right is actually shown a G520. Uh, this sets up the machine in mode that I mentioned and sets the work coordinates for the sub spindle from the machine and data. Uh, G521 is used when milling on the sub spindle side. This automatically sets up the C2 axis. In other words, there's no need to engage or reference the C axis if we use this G521. The machine automatically knows that ah, you're going to be doing live tool work on the sub spindle. Let me reference the C and set you all up ready to go. Um, the running program on the right is shown a G510 command. Uh, this is setting up the machining mode and it sets the work coordinates for machining on the main spindle side. And it gets this once again from the machining data. Uh, G511 is used when milling on the main spindle side. Once again, it automatically sets up C axis. Uh, we'll just come in and program X, Z, and C. Uh, the running program here on the right shows a G550. Uh, this sets the work coordinates for the sub spindle to move to the desired pickoff location from the machine and data. So it's somewhat uh, just this one line. The sub spindle is going to wrap it forward close to the part, actually, in this case, within a half an inch. The cutoff tool itself is going to go to a 350 dimension. So when the sub goes to within a half an inch of the part, it's going to travel the rest of the way, in this case at 200 inches a minute, to the distance based that it needs to go to based on the machine and data. Machine and data, one of the items was chuck to position, which really told the machine how far we wanted the part sticking out of the sub spindle when we picked off. Here's a view of the rear of the main spindle. It's shown the uh, chuck close sensor. The disc for the for a brake to clamp the C axis is shown. Uh, however, the BNA 42S does not have a brake as standard. We, do, we don't have a Y axis uh, on this machine, so any current forces are basically from the X direction or the cross position. Uh, therefore, we really don't need a brake when cross drilling. So, like I said, here's a disc. No brake is actually attached. Uh, there is a brake option listed in the parts manual. I've never known anybody attach a brake on on there, but it is in the parts manual. Here's an inside view of the machine. Uh, we can see the main and sub spindle air blow attached. Um, those are the copper tubes on the left and on the right. So these might be used to blow chips off the part. In fact, that's probably exactly what they're used for in this sketch here. I do have a quick question popped up. Does yep. the turret allow for 1000 PSI high pressure coolant? Uh, yes, uh, it's it. It's going to be in the machine quotation and it, it will handle up to a thousand PSI um, with an additional high pressure unit through the turret. Um, so on the same screen, um, you're seeing locations for a drill breakage detector and a cutoff breakage detector. 
Um, you can see this on the left just above the main spindle. So this would be to mount an optional cutoff breakage detector. Um, the machine does come with a standard uh, cutoff breakage detector based on spindle RPM, rotation of the spindle, basically to check for any movement on the sub. But this would be an optional blade type um, cutoff breakage detector would check fire a blade to see if there was any stock there. So these are the two holes you're seeing there, like I mentioned, or for a drill breakage detector. We primarily use uh, wand type detectors, um, but there is uh, other options for that location. So here's a view of the rear of the sub spindle. Once again, showing the chuck close sensor and we can see the, the brake on the spindle also. Or the disc for brake. Here's a view of the rear of the sub spindle. Uh, this is showing the ejection unit. The unit is pneumatic and there's both forward and rearward sensors to confirm part ejection. An air blast or coolant can be flushed through the unit while ejecting the finished part from the sub spindle. So here's a view of the parts catcher at the sub spindle side, uh, ready to catch the ejected part. Now there might be instances where we don't want to pick the part off. Maybe you know you got a rush job and you you can't wait for the sub spindle collar, so you're just going to chop the parts off and catch them on the front side, and maybe you're going to finish them off on a belt sander. I know it's a bit crude, but if you're in a job shop, you got to make it work, right? So anyway, you're seeing the uh, sub spindle in the forward position. Um, why? Because the parts catcher itself is, is attached to the V-axis slide. So it's moving forward, we'll cut off the part, it would fall into the basket. Off the part, we would turn the B axis to its home position, move back basically, and then command the catcher arm to return to the part receiver box and dump the part into the parts conveyor. So you see in the receiver box here, if we bring the basket down and drop it in, in this area, there's nothing below, below here basically to to catch the part. It's going to drop the part at this point. If we bring the basket down, it's going to drop the part into the chip conveyor. So we're going to move back. Then we're going to bring the arm down, which is going to place the part on the conveyor. Sorry. <clears throat> uh, let's take a look at the BNA 42S machine in action. Um, as mentioned, we have 16 actual turret locations. Um, eight plus another eight half index. We'll start off here, we're turning on the, on the front side. Now we're moving to turn on the back side. Drilling on the front. Drilling on the back. And I'm moving there from front to back and back again to the index. Right now we don't see that. Tim, just so you know, when your video is going, your sound is cutting out a little. So you might want to pause the video and then speak and then pause the video and speak, but both at the same time, your sound is cutting out a little bit. No problem. Uh, so basically, I apologize for that uh, 
sound problem, but uh, we started off turning on the front and then we're turning on the back. Then we drilled on the front and drilled on the back side. And they're doing this within this program basically to save on, on index time. They've already indexed at the turning station, so they're turning on the front and turning on the back. Indexing, drilling on the front and drilling on the back. You could do it any way you wanted, but that, like I like mentioned, they're trying to save on their index time. Um, after that, say we're running into some C-axis work. Uh, remember, greater torque is achieved due to the live tooling being of single drive. It's only driving one tool at a time. Um, I'm going to continue. Um, you can see in this picture right now that they're using a double live face tool. So they're using two live in one station. Um, just going to move on a Tim, little bit. Tim, you know what could help? You, can you click the button to turn off your camera to us? That could probably help your, your throughput. Yep. I'll give it a try. And please continue. Yeah. So I say we You probably have to do the pause thing, Tim. You're still garbled when the video is playing. Still garbled. Um, I believe we are still having sound problems. Um, so we did some live work on the front side, and I'm going to go to the back side and do some live work uh, using that Z offset live holder that we about earlier um, so we're going to see the live tool being used on the back side and we're going to continue machining on the front side and then we're going to while that's taking place we're going to catch the part with the basket um, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen after that like I say we are in technical difficulties when I try talking over the video so I'm going to tell you what's going to happen and then you're going to watch the video. So we're going to dump the part out while we're turning on the front. We're going to do some drilling on the front and then some rigid tapping on the front side. Uh, rigid tapping on this machine is standard on the main spindle, the sub spindle and the live tools. Um, once we've tapped the front of the part, we're going to come up and pick the part off. And we're going to pull with the sub spindle or the B axis to pull out the material for the next part. And um, we're going to pick off using the using synchronized spindle rotation also. So I'm going to continue and uh, hopefully we don't have any more technical difficulties running to the end of this video. As it's going, I think I can speak. So to add to what Tim was saying, as uh, this machine has this smaller footprint and this closer space, this is where we get excellent productivity and cycle time that the machine doesn't have to move as far. And uh, you know, tool changes are a second and a little bit versus other big machines at three and four and five seconds. So uh, this Miano and you know why Miano concepts of to keep the machine uh, series small enough to run these parts gives us high productivity. So that concludes uh, the BNA 42S2 part of the presentation. Uh, is there any questions on the screen, Brian, at this time? I'll move on. I did have one more. Um, high pressure coolant through the subspindle. High pressure, um, we really don't recommend a thousand PSI through the sub spindle. We had some uh, problems at one time with seals as far as blowing the high pressure through. 
Yeah, and to add to that, a standard is what we call medium pressure. So there is a higher than flood pressure we call medium pressure. It's about 100 and is it 150, Tim? Yeah, about uh, 135, 50, yes. That we have as standard. So we have air and this medium pressure and high pressure is just not needed. So we do have the uh, optional high pressure through the turret to give you the same result. And uh, thank you for the question. And then there's one more that's in general, but you could answer it now is a uh, question. Uh, if and when will LFE be added to additional Miano lathes? Uh, the only machine right now that we're going to be getting would be the GTY and that will be I think available this summer. However, that machine is special order. It's not LFV ready, unfortunately. Um, so as far as I know, that's the only Miano in the works that's going to have LFV and that's just going to have it on the on the Z1 axis, I believe. Yes, and I, I can add to that. So as Miano construction of the 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 um, sales uh, concept is why Miano is the Mianos are all box ways, hand scraped box ways. And this way structure is not uh, convenient for LFV of highly moving uh, the way back and forth in a small amount. Now we have many other ways to do uh, uh, chip evacuation and on these machines uh, much power because of this way construction that we typically can just feed the tool at an advanced feed and we can break the chips. So LFV is much less needed uh, but on a Miano product. But uh, please uh, come join us. Uh, I think it's Friday. We have a presentation on LFV and we can show you those more geared towards the Swiss type machines. On the GTY, it's actually the Z1 and the X slide, not the turret slide, but the uh, gang turret uh, slide. slide. Yeah. OK, Tim, so please continue. So now we're moving on. Uh, the Miano BNA 42DHY3. Uh, it's the third generation of the BNA 42DHY model. Uh, the benefits of this model are that it is built on space saving design, just like the BNA 42S. In addition, capable of complex machining on the main spindle and the sub spindle. And this machine's got an additional secondary turret. So the DHY, DHY meaning double head. So it's got two heads, two turrets, and it's got a Y axis on the main turret. Once again, this has got a really small footprint. The machine weighs in at approximately 6,800 pounds. There's going to be a lot of these slides repeating ourselves and you know I'll be flicking through them all but uh, once again if you have questions even if it's something we covered in the earlier slide just just bring it up. So the bed's pretty much uh, similar construction. Um, once again it's designed to uh, basically uniformly uh, distribute uh, heat within the the machine and area and the casting itself. It's very stable, thermally stable, I should say. Um, so on this machine, um, once again, the main spindle, similar design. We have a sub spindle with a C axis, just like the BNA 42S. Um, difference being here on the sub spindle side, um, it incorporates a, an X2 axis. So the spindle slide on the Z2 is a hand scrape box wear design, and the X2 axis is actually on a dovetail mount. As I say, we've got an additional axis on that sub spindle side on this machine. Uh, the octagon main turret is mounted on a carriage. As I say, that's got a Z1 and X1, and now we've added a Y1. Um, once again, the axis are all hand scrape box wear design on the front end side or the head one side. In addition to this, we've got a six station turret 
it's added for independent back work. Uh, they couldn't motion when we're using this small turret. It's hard to see in this picture, but it's done with the X2 and Z2. So the small turret here next to the main spindle, more or less. So as I say, the main spindle is similar design to the BNA42S with the angular contact ball bearing and the double row cylindrical bearings at the rear. Machine and specifications, um, diameter wise, as far as chunking capacity, uh, on the main it's the same inch and five eighths, same with the length as far as the machine and length, uh, main spindle speeds are the same, sub spindle the same, live tool is the same. Uh, rapid traverse rates on the X1, Z1 and Z2 axis are 20 meters a minute. The Y1 and X2 rapid rates are 12 meters per minute. Uh, horsepower ratings are the same um, as the were on the BNA42S. Main spindle once again as the B42 or the DIN 173E system is standard. The draw tube on this machine is the same 43 millimeters ID. Uh, the spindle nose is the same 110 millimeters. Does come with filler tubes. The length is the same. The sum spindle accepts the same collets as the main. However, the draw tube diameter once again is 30 millimeters. The spindle nose is a special design once again on this sub spindle. However, uh, a four inch chuck is available as an option. So here we see the redesigned sub spindle of the DHY3. I say redesigned because yes, it is totally different to the original DHY and the DHY2 machine. Um, so we are seeing it here, it's got, uh, we're seeing the, certainly the spindle nose is different. As I said, there's a bolt on, like a traditional spindle, let's say. We didn't have this on the 42S. And here it's shown with an optional uh, four inch three. So optional chucking systems available. Once again, uh, Collared pad system, the S20, the bone and sharp 22D, the five inch three and uh, two jaws on the front, the sub spindle side, collet wise, once again, we got the uh, DIN 171E and the bone and sharp 22, except say we have the additional option to put a four inch uh, three or two jaw chuck on the sub spindle side. The part numbers uh, for the main and the sub spindles are different from the BNA 42S2 machine. So just remember that, um, you know, when you're putting in your orders or ordering something, these numbers are different, even though these systems are the same or similar to what was on the BNA 42S. There, there is a question, question here, Tim, and it's, it's it's uh, not complete, so I'm going to try to answer it. It says same chuck sleeves as the older versions, B42 and 22C. So as, Chip, as Tim just said, our standard is the B42, and we can get the other sizes, but the inner working sleeve is different as this whole chuck is different because it's uh, changeable. But uh, yes, it does take the same collets throughout the product line. And yes, there is options for other collets if you had older product you wanted to be the same as. OK, please continue. Very good. <clears throat> so once again, parts catcher standard, parts conveyor standard, the limitations being the length of the basket, the receiver box, just the complexity of getting longer parts out. You know, that's always a problem, but I mean, uh, something might, you may be able to design something to accept. Maybe it's, you know, you only want to run a few parts even. You can just pull them out by hand, even if you just want to get the job out the door. 
Uh, this machine once again comes uh, with a, either a hinge type conveyor or a 250 micron filter type chip conveyor. So the main turret is the, basically the same. It's eight stations with half index and capability. However, the addition of the Y axis gives us even more flexibility uh, that greatly enhances the amount of tools that can be used on the main and the sub spindles. Uh, cooling and through tooling can be utilized on each of the eight stations as mentioned uh, earlier. It has a high, medium high pressure system, around about 135 PSI through the turret. As we did mention, we could get an optional 1000 PSI system to go through the turret. Um, once again, we can't use that on the half index positions. Well, we only have the flood coolant at the half index positions. Uh, the small layer back working turret is say, six stations. It can handle three one inch ID stations, sleeve type stations, and three three quarter inch turning stations. The turret on the back side does, does not accommodate live tools. Once again, we're showing multi-positional holders and the drive mechanism on the turret. Earlier, the Y-axis on the main turret gives us more tool and flexibility as well as more, more machining capability. Uh, a double cross shifted live tool is shown on the right. The Y-axis travel is a stroke of 70 millimeters. So I'm saying this uh, double cross tool. So when I say it's shifted, you can see it's these live aren't on center. So this would actually get you closer to the main spindle, which is nice. So that's a, a very nice tool holder and it's utilizing the Y axis. The back spindle uh, is equipped with an X axis, as mentioned. Uh, this allows simultaneous and superimposed machining with the main and sub spindles. We can front turn the front, back turn, drill the front, drill the back, and even mill the front and mill the back at the same time. Um, we'll see some superimposition work in a video later. But, um, this is similar to what we can do on the syncoms, obviously turning front, turning back. Now while we're on this screen, um, there's a limit of how far the turret, uh, sorry, the sub spindle can go to this side of center line. So if we're turning a large diameter on the front side, there is a possibility if this back tool is tucked up that we might actually over travel over here, depending on the diameter that we're machining on the back side. There's ways around that. I'm just uh, bringing it to your attention. So the main uh, turret clearance on the back side has been increased on this third generation machine. So I mentioned earlier about this distance here on this back side. They've increased this distance here, basically from the face of the turret to the wall. Uh, this view also shows the location of the back working turret on the lower left side. So here's that small back working. Uh, double, triple and quad holders assure sufficient tool positions even for the complex work pieces. So there's something like this one here, obviously giving us three ID, sorry, four ID front, four ID back if needed. We're gonna have a quad live also, which I believe might be on a different slide. So the standard tooling package is the same package that was attached to the BNA 42S machine. It's got some more D, some ID, knee holder, um, stop up plate. Stop up plate, if needed, 
As I say, that video we saw showed the pod getting or the material being pulled out with the sub spindle. Some people may use a stopper. This stopper plate actually bolts onto the side of a double turning holder. So we can feed the bar stock out to the stopper plate. Once again, typical live cross holders. This machine obviously any more options. That's that offset one. Like I said, we've got a lot more options. We've got quad face. We've got quad cross. So this one's got actually two offset on the front for working on the front and two offset on the back. So as I say, this, it's only got eight stations on the machine, but we can put a lot of tools in if we utilize this type of live tool. Here's a close look at the small back working turret. Uh, three ID working stations and three OD turning, turning type tools. Uh, optional sleeves of various sizes are available for the back tool post if required. As mentioned, the turning stations are three quarters. So these are optional units. You know, the customer, or if there's any customers listening, they might just put a boring bar in there and do some turning with it or have their own, let's say, sleeve extensions. We actually make these units, uh, they're in the quotation. They're real nice. I mean, they're perfectly designed for the job. They slide into these pockets and on the back side is actually a, a bolt where we can pull it up tight against this face. Um, and they're fairly inexpensive, but they do a nice job. The CNC control on this machine is a Fanuc Zero ITF. Uh, it has many NC functions, included as standard. Uh, once again, it's got uh, the options that are listed there on the right side. Um, and support software screens, uh, just like we saw on the BNA 42S. This machine, it has a few different screens, uh, different options, I should say. This machine is standard. It's got a tool monitor, which we're going to take a look at later on. So once again, the machine and data, we'll mention this, on the BNA 42S, very similar, but it's identical. Does the same amount, so I'm going to flick through that slide. Now, once again, the machine and support screens. We have the tool counter screen, cycle time screen, start condition screen, spindle revolving tool screen, and there's a cutting pattern screen. So, on the cutting pattern screen, as I say, fair. In this case, it read the G520. That's where we're seeing turret one, spindle two. Depending on what cutting pattern we're in, and this this machine, it's got a G530 cutting pattern. That would be when we're machining on the front and machining on the back with the main turret. That would come up here telling us that we're machining front and back with the main turret on both spindles. We mentioned this screen earlier. It's same concept as mentioned earlier with a 510. 550 to pick off with, just like the BNA 42S. Now, is that one is showing a single system? This machine does have a, a two head double system machine. Yes, should have mentioned that. So we have a, a path or a head. We have a head one and a head two on the DHY. Head one being where we program primarily work on the main spindle. And head two where we program work on the sub spindle or the small back work and turret. So this uh, is screen is not available on the BNA 42S2. Uh, this is the tool monitor screen. 
So this tool monitor is a stand, standard function in the DHY3 machines. Um, the first part is run and access loads are monitored for each tool called up. Peak values are then set as to when the tool or insert may need to be changed. Um, like I said, the tool monitor is not available on the BNA 42S. So this is a nice feature, like I said, it's standard on this DHY machine. Here's another screen that uh, comes with the DHY. It's a power monitor screen, so the power consumption monitor allows uh, monitoring of the amount of power being used. So obviously when you, you run your job and you can find out how much your electric bill is going to be at the end of the month, right? See if you charge enough for the job. This machine also has uh, an electromagnetic switch maintenance screen. So this screen is used to set the on off usage count for electromagnetic switches uh, that are on this machine. It uh, notifies the operator of the replacement interval for these switches. So this feature is not available on the DHY2 machine. Sorry, the BNA 42S machine. Another feature on this machine that's not available on the BNA 42S is the hand wheel. The uh, hand wheel feature, I should say. Yes, the BNA 42S has a hand wheel for manually moving an axis. This hand wheel function can be used to prove out the program. This is known as the retrace function on the control panel. Uh, this function is similar to program check function on the CENTCOM machines. So we can just wind through nice and slow and check out the program, prove out the program. Uh, Superimposed and synchronized machining function. So this is all standard. This allows turning and drilling with the main turret on both the main and the sub spindle at the same time. So here's a shot, you will see that there's slightly more tool overhang on the tool at the subspindle. We may need this due to the limit of the X2 trap. So basically, what I'm saying is if, if we're on an inch and five eighths material, let's say, you know, we face the part off or we wrap it down to the part, so 1.625, we might wrap it this tool down to 1.725. 50 there on either side clearance. Depends on what operation we're doing, we, but we that is the worst case scenario. We could be turning on this machine as far as the front diameter. Now, if this tool was tucked up a little further, there is a possibility, as I say, that this X2 might go too far beyond the center line. So this is exaggerated. Obviously, you don't want to stick your tool in reality out this far, but uh, that's why you're saying it in this fashion, in this shot, let's say. I do have a question that can be asked in this area. Are there any plans to add a Y axis to the sub so we can continue milling once Y milling is activated? Uh, not that I know of. As far as this platform, um, the advance, advancement that I've seen on the BNA series was a um, basically, the BNA 42S machine, it was a, an SY. It basically had a 12 station turret instead of an 8, and it had a Y axis on that main turret. Um, other BNAs down the pipeline that are going to be available, I'm not aware of. Yeah, and that's a lot of machines, so these are trying to be cost effective, so they, they, don't have every feature there is. Now, we go to the other Mianos, we have these features. Uh, but I will add that as the one holder that Tim showed that has mills pointing in both direction uh, in the Z axis, we can milling interpolation do two totally different features simultaneously with superimposition. So we often can get maybe what you're looking to do uh, but not for every feature. So we could go to another model and uh, do these features if you wish. Uh, go ahead and please continue, Tim. Yeah. 
Uh, polygon turning is possible uh, from the main turret using a live tool and a special cutter. Um, so you get all those polygon turn, as I say, you need a special holder. He has, this is shown a, a cutter for a hob tool. Um, a special subspindle cabinet is available that can be used to polygon turn using the subspindle. Um, so as you can see in this image, um, the cabinet is different. The cabinet actually incorporates some inserts so what we're going to see in the video, and now once again, I might lose you as far as the audio on the video. And I don't like long periods of silence, but it might be that way, unfortunately, just so you can see the video and my voice isn't garbled. But we're going to see this in action. Um, we're going to see superimposed machining. In other words, turning on the front, turning on the back, drilling on the front, drilling on the back. We're going to see the small back work and turret being used while we're machining on the front side. On the front side, we're going to be using a live Y axis tool, a double actually, double cross. And near the end of the video, you're going to see this, as I said, this polygon unit on the subspindle in action. So the X2 is going to move off center, and we're going to polygon turn on the far side of the part let's say um so i'm gonna as i say i'm gonna maybe try and talk through if it gets bad i'm sure brian will uh, let me know as far as the audio but we're gonna move on to the uh, video of the dhy3 machine i think say. it's best tim if you go and then when you want to say something just pause say it quick and then go again because the video yeah. and your speech has the issue yeah, no problem. OK. Stopped it pretty quick there, but <laughs> they're using a bar puller in the turret on this video at the beginning. So that's what you're seeing there. So turn in the front, turn in the back. So they're utilizing the X2 and Z2 on the subspindle side. And it's basically doing its own cutting pattern, let's say, on the, on the back side while we're turning on the front. So the next tool up, as I say, is this front and back drill. Um, simultaneous. They didn't show us doing any peck drilling there, but peck drilling is possible within this superimposed and synchronized machining. So now it's machining with the main turret on the front side and the small back working turret on the subspindle side. You're seeing the double cross, the, the y-axis live on the uh, main turret. So now we're going to see the pod get ejected into the parts basket. 
Uh, not long after this, we're going to see the polygon cut out on the subspinal cap node come into play. Before that, obviously, there's this quad uh, live tool, quad live tool. It's going to mill, it's going to drill, it's actually going to rigid tap, I believe. So that's it for the video for the DHY3. Um, in this slide, we're basically showing you some typical parts that are great fit for both the BNA 42S2 and the BNA DHY3 machine. Um, perfect parts uh, for both machines, especially when they, you know, they might be attached with a 12 foot ball order. Uh, that concludes uh, the presentation for today. I'd like to thank you all for attending. Uh, if any further questions we'd like to hear? I do have one question in the uh, backlog here, and it's um, Was there any plans to redesign the sub turret? Six ID stations similar to a citizen back work. Uh, you have to go through the question. I guess they mean si similar to a Swiss back work. Um, actually, if if we look in the parts manual, there's a six station back work and ID turret listed and as a sketch of it within the parts manual there. Uh, have I ever ordered one to be put on a machine in the field? I haven't, but um, it is actually listed in, in the parts manual for the DHY3 machine. 6ID back. OK, thank you, Tim. And, and that's it for the questions at this time. So if you would like to summarize. Uh, just say I'd, wait, number one, thank you for, for listening. But um, of all the Mianos I've worked on, I've I've found this platform, especially the BNA 42S2 machine, is one of the most accurate Mianos that I have worked on. Uh, one of the parts early on that I ran on this machine, it was plus or minus, actually it was plus or minus a tenth. It was a two tenths tolerance. It was an aluminum part, but uh, that was on the sub spindle side. We were doing a small bore and holding the uh, two tenths. Um, as I say, it seems to be a very stable platform, this BNA series. And that's about it. I did just get one more question. Yeah. Uh, is there any way to monitor tool life for the polygon cutters, or is it done via part count only? That's a that's a tough question. <laughs> it is. It, 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 it would be a function of spindle load. And as far as I can recall, um, I don't believe we have a spindle load. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think we have a spindle load monitor on that machine. But I mean, I would imagine it's through the sub load on the sub spindle, how it would be would be the way we would get some sort of feedback. Yeah, and since there's three different cutters or 
uh, multiple cutters. Uh, it could be intermittent. I, I think that's that's difficult. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all. Oh, there's one more new question. They're popping in. What application is ideal for the BNA42, S2, and DHY? Application wise, you, you saw a bunch of parts there. Small connector, I say small connectors. I always say any part, and I mean any part, any industry that will fit in the palm of your hand. I mean, honest, an inch and five eighths, something two inches long. You know, I worked in a job shop for many years and I can't tell you how many parts that are on the front side loaded them by hand and some other machine and did the back end. If I had a machine like a BNA 42S, when I was a young lad, let's say, it, I would I would I would have been over the moon. In other words, getting parts dropped off complete. I mean, it's the same with a million. We can, we can only, uh, we haven't got a Y axis, but to get a part, dropped off complete, maybe with a one flat milled on, you know, threaded on the front side, threaded on the back counterboard, um, you know, couplings, that sort of thing. You, you saw the images of the parts in that slide. If you if you look at parts like that, that's that's the 4DNA42S. And I know it's, uh, it's not a glamorous machine, you know, it's not an ABX THY, but it'll do a lot of work. And there's a lot of uh, BNC machines out there, BNC 34s. Um, and the customers love them, and there's still loads of them out there. To me, the BNA 42S would be the ID, ideal step up from that BNC machine. And state of the art, as I say, a lot quicker. Um, I love that machine, to be quite honest. Like I say, I can't speak too highly about the accuracy of that machine. I'd like to add to that. So I would challenge anybody online, if you look at your, your uh, lineup of equipment that you have, and you have a bunch of two and a half inch, three inch machines, and we get customers that, that come to us that, that we have to have a three inch, two turret machine, and they have already three, four, five, eight, ten of these machines, and so they feel this smaller Miano might not be in their desire. And as we look at their parts and go across their ten machines, you know, three of the ten are running larger parts. Seven of them are running one inch diameter, more simple part that we would destroy on this Miano. So. Uh, most customers do have lots of work and yes they need the larger size but often they're they're sacrificing and they're running smaller parts on these larger machines and this is the key to uh, this design concept of a small footprint small axis motion great cycle time great thermal distribution and uh, great uh, part quality and, and tolerancing and so basically, as Tim said, all parts that uh, fit the machine, you know, run beautifully on this machine. So I think we're going to end this presentation. Thank you, Tim, for your uh, presentation. And for those there, uh, please, uh, we have multiple events coming in the, next, the rest of the week and uh, for the um, next week. And if you care to join some of our other web events, we would uh, love to see you there. So thank you for your attention and uh, we will end the meeting. Thank you.